Hello, everyone. I'm James Singleton, founder of Insightful Voice, a life coaching practice based here in Boston. And uh, as you may know, I recently talked to life coaches and thought leaders from around the country on various topics. And one topic uh, that I discussed with them that no one likes to talk about is failure. Uh, in fact, I talked to a life coach, a therapist, and an intuitive. Sounds like the first line of a very bad joke, but it's not. And what they had to say about failure really may take you to the next level of your life, especially as we approach 2014. So what I've done is taken the very best parts of these conversations that I've had, I've packaged them up, and now I'm presenting them to you in what I'm calling the best of your IV. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. I've got my cup of coffee. Do you? And the question is, is there something that you failed at that you have allowed to keep you stuck in fear instead of moving forward that you need to acknowledge and welcome? And if so, then how do you do that? I bet you these experts will have an answer for you. Thanks so much for watching. And if you didn't get a chance, check out the video uh, that I just recently did on Lessons Learned and Achieving Success, another part of the Your Best of IV series. Wow. Uh, that's an excellent question. I think part of it is human nature. Mm. At some of us are just predisposed to being conservative people, not going, not conservative from a political view standpoint, but conservative from a how they live their life standpoint, not going for things, not taking chances, not stepping outside their comfort zone. Maybe that's how they were raised and the values that were instilled in them growing up and they never felt the desire to do anything differently from that. So that's probably, I would say, the most common scenario. Other scenarios could be somebody who tried and failed and didn't want to get back on the horse. Right, right. And so they're scared because they think it's going to happen again. Right. And instead of taking a, a, a step back and looking at the big picture and saying, I failed, what could I learn from that? They just exactly. fail and they just stop. Exactly. So with, uh, with failure, let's say uh, we do feel like we failed and really let ourselves down. Often with that comes pain. Mm. It's painful to fail, especially if it's something that we've tied up our identity in. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but often with pain, pain is usually the harbinger of conviction. When we've been through a lot, it strengthens our convictions that things we will do and won't do in the future. Yeah. And those convictions actually lead to a definiteness of purpose uh, that that obviously create passion and a greater confidence. So it's uh, ironic that uh, uh, failure itself, in it wound up in failure itself, is is the the seed of greater confidence uh, and passion. Wow. Failure, failure itself is the seed of greater confidence and passion. Wow, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just thinking about that a little bit. I'm kind of digesting it. That's really good. That is that in my 40s, when, when my whole life turned upside down, hmm. I sat down and I started saying, all right, look, your life just went to hell in a handbasket. Really, it's gone. You know, baby, you got to create again. So at that point, I was like, what is it that I want? And I continually ask my question, that, myself that question. What do I really want? Am I living my life the way I want it to be? Yeah. And if, you know, am I, am I doing what I really want? And if I'm not, then I have to take a look at that and say, all right, well, if that's not the case, then what do you need to do differently? And I think that question will give, if you if you ask yourself that question, is this relationship something I wanna spend time on? Is this friendship some someone I want to be involved with? Is this person I'm dating someone I want to spend time with and get my, you know, get my, my body involved with or my emotion, my heart involved with? Is this job something that feeds my soul? 
is this is this food that I'm eating something that really in, you know feeds my feeds my body is this exercise that I do is this something I love I swim regularly I love it we just my husband and I went through a massive food change recently we went gluten free and we you know like I tried veganism for about two weeks and I was like oh I can't do this I've been vegetarian you know for like 25 years but vegan I was like no I want my cheese <laughs> right. right you know so so it's like you know all of these things I mean I don't drink I don't smoke I don't drugs you know like none of that but I like cheese <laughs> you know so it's like what are the things that you really love that feed your soul? What's the art that you look at? What are the, you know, it's like that. If you live your life from that space, nothing's a failure. Everything is a lesson to learn. And, you know, and you're connected to yourself, to the highest part of yourself, that, that divine that it was within. And that connects you with everybody around you.